This video is going to be covering RGB masking, which may seem a little abstract in this video, but is actually incredibly useful. If you have any questions about this video or anything in the shader at all, feel free to join the Discord. Avoid asking questions in YouTube because you're going to get a slow response and it's probably going to be join the Discord. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing you need for RGB masking is an RGB mask. And I'm going to use Photoshop to show you how to make that. If you don't have Photoshop, then I'm sorry, but it's sort of the standard for doing this stuff. And you can probably do it in any other program, I'm just not familiar with them. So the first thing you're going to do is sort of get red, green, and blue colors. And then you want to either make a layer that's additive or set your brush to linear dodge or add. And then you'll take green. Uh, we got soft ones at the moment I'm going to make them hard we got green and then blue and then red and we're going to grab some soft ones just for examples so there's red there's green and then I'll just put blue right in the put blue right in the middle and these are additive so for example let me just switch this back to a hard brush if I took this blue and put it with this red, you you get a uh, magenta, and if I put it here, you get uh, like a cyan and a magenta between them. So you're actually adding those colors together rather than like blending them like you would normally, and that lets you have a really clean layer. So I'm going to save this to the folder that the example is in. So I'm just going to name it RGB mask, and then make it a PNG and save that. And we're going to go back here and we're going to apply the RGB mask that we just saved. I guess this one and put it in the mask slot. So you're going to see nothing different at the start. But when we start filling in the red, green and blue textures, you'll see something pop up. So if we set the red texture to red, you will see that a circle becomes red and that is actually the red circle right here and you don't need to make that red you can make it any color you want you're just choosing where that red shows up and you can do the same for all of them so set that one to purple and set this one to blue and you can see down here that they're actually blending together because we have those soft brushes so you can also use textures. I'll do that now. We will go and grab a random noise texture. Mm, this one. And it's multiplied by that yellow, but it doesn't have to be. You can set that to whatever you want. And you can go in and tile that. This texture does not tile properly, so let's grab one that does. And you can pan it, do whatever you want. Anything you can do with a normal a uh, normal texture. And you can do this for all of them. This is really useful if you wanted to have something like maybe you had clothes on an avatar and you had three sections that were distinctly different. You could recolor them very quickly like this. And if you make avatars for worlds, like you make public avatars, a lot of people have a bunch of different colors. This is a nice way to just sort of set up a color scheme really quickly. You can select all your materials and just change those colors quickly and have a bunch of different avatars. Or even if you have Avatar 3.0 and you want to change like the palette of specific areas, that's pretty useful. And you can tile your mask as you would expect. Now there's two modes. There's the replace mode and the multiplicative mode. By default, you are replacing. So if I make the background this sort of rainbow and have it or if i have multiplicative unchecked it's just going to replace the background now if i have multiplicative checked it's going to blend those colors in with the background so you're going to get a multiplicative blend which is just say like if you have black which is zero if you multiply any color by zero you're just going to get zero so it's going to stay black but if you have white and you multiply any color by white which is one you're just going to get the same color and you can change that to whatever color you want and sort of blend between it. Tile the main texture to make it more apparent. 
And that is basically how RGB masking works. It can be really useful in specific use cases, or you can go sort of intense with it. So say you you had armor and you wanted maybe one spot to be leather, but like you had an alternate version where you wanted it to be like cloth, you could use a leather and a cloth texture and do that. And that covers everything in RGB masking. So if you have any questions about this, direct them to the Discord. If you want to see this scene and have these textures, they will be included in version 6.1 of the shader, which will be available for free in the next month or two and is available right now to patrons. Thanks for watching.